folks to Midland Community Stadium for tonight's big game. I'm Dave Marsh uh, bringing you the action here on MCTV along with Chris Stevens and uh, we're expecting a great game tonight. It's homecoming, an unusual homecoming here at the stadium, but this uh, game between Midland and Mount Pleasant has really become a really big rivalry over the last few years, Chris. Yeah, well, Dave, I was looking up the records over the recent history of their uh, rivalry against each other. The past 15 seasons, Mount Pleasant holds an 8-7 record wow. over Midland High. Last year's game, just to show you how close, close the games are battled, Middle High pulled out a 22-21 win over in Mount Pleasant. I expect more of the same tonight with another close game. It really should be a great game. Two of the best teams in the league, both 2-0 coming in. And uh, we were talking about uh, before the game, you know, Midland circles Dow first as the big game, and then second team they look for usually is Mount Pleasant. So should be a great game tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks uh, to also to Dow Diamond and Chris Mudhank for uh, um, showing the game over at Dow Diamond tonight. And just look forward to a great game. Thanks for tuning in. We'd like to thank like you to for thank attending you. tonight's game. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the MCTV broadcast of the Midland High 2020 homecoming game. It's uh, Midland High taking on Mount Pleasant on what promises to be a fantastic game here at Midland Community Stadium. We welcome all the fans tuning in on the YouTube channel and also over at Dow Diamond. Thanks, Dow Diamond, for uh, allowing fans to come out and and watch the broadcast uh, for what promises to be a great game. This is Dave Marsh bringing you the action along with Chris Stevens and uh, looking forward to a great one tonight, Chris. Oh, two great programs. And uh, we have to first say what a unique homecoming, Dave, in the, <laughs> yeah. in the history of Midland High. I mean, with the COVID situation going on, there's limited uh, fan fans here. And um, normally, a normal year, you'd have, what, five, 6,000 yeah. plus people here for a game like this. Yeah, especially, uh, um, this and uh, we're about to get underway here. The Mount Pleasant Oilers will kick off to the Chemex. Both teams 2 and 0 coming into this game. We're going to talk a little bit as we go about what's become a tremendous rivalry between these two teams. But uh, these are perennial contenders um, in the Saginaw Valley League. Again, both teams 2 and 0 coming in. We are about to get underway. Line drive kick, fielded at the six yard line. Right up the middle, breaking loose. He's got room to run, he's still on his feet. Eli Gordon all the way out to the 45 yard line. The dangerous Gordon returns the kick and gives the Chemex great field position to start things off. Well, Eli Gordon, it's only the third week of the season, but he's already established himself as one of the top playmakers in the Saginaw Valley League. And you'll see here him get the ball down at this point, cut in and head to the sideline. He's got quickness and he moves it, takes it upfield before he is brought down. Excellent field position for Midland High. And so Al Money, number 10 quarterbacking for the Chemex, his third year as the starter. He's gonna keep it up the middle 
Going to pick up about four on the play. Oh, money the ball Make the handoff to Gordon, and uh, the Oilers rise to the occasion. This is a very big Mount Pleasant team. Well, keep your eyes on two players from Mount Pleasant. Both are future Division I college prospects. One is number 84, Josh Schnell, and no, the other is number one, Anton Rickhamstrick. Defensive end linebackers, both about 6'5", 240. Money to take the snap. Quick drop. It's Gordon, still on his feet, drives ahead, first down into Euler territory. This is a combination that has been tremendous, not just this year, but the last couple Gunner, years. Well, how comforting for head coach Eric Metner to have Al Money, three-year starter, coming in his senior year. He uh, he trimmed, trimmed down a little bit, got a little bit quicker this year, and he is he's a high school version of Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good <laughs> he, way to put he it. He can throw, he can run, he can beat you with his arm, beat you with his legs. Very smart and competitive. Gordon in Handoff is to Johnson. Plows ahead of Rickhamstrick on the tackle. Drew Johnson. Drew Johnson, the ball carrier. He's uh, number two in the conference in rushing with 153 yards, two touchdowns, averaging 8.5 yards per carry is Johnson. So he's a, another dangerous threat for the Chemex. Yeah, Johnson's the one of a handful of players for the Chemex who plays both ways. He's the middle linebacker on defense, and on offense he is a – a bull of a running back. He's in the backfield. Gordon, number three, Martin Bradley. Number two, Ty Smith, you'll see out wide. Money's going to keep it again up the middle. Stop short. Gains maybe a yard. Oh, It'll bring up third and long. Third and about six. That uh, front line for the Chemex center, number 53, Parker Winter. Left guard, number 55, Zach Wilder. Right guard, 54, Colin Coffey. Left tackle, number 70, Logan Ware. And uh, right tackle, number 63, Ethan Church. Formulate a very tough chemic front. Number 19, Drew Barry is the H-back for the Chemics. Money back to pass. He's under pressure, surveys the field, dumps it off. Tremendous catch. Did he call it in? I think it's in? a comp They're going to call it they're complete, talking. I think. Their officials are discussing it. They call the catch. Tremendous catch by yes. Gordon. Money to Gordon. And heads up play by Money. First down, middle Well, high. you see Money scramble to his right along the sidelines, and here's Gordon coming to the, to the ball, and when he sees that Money is rolling Gordon's out. Reception. Gordon the along the sideline the makes the catch, intent. keeps one foot in, which you have to do in high school. Nice snag, right and what, on the 25 yard line. What a pass by Money, just a nice little touch over the linebacker's outstretched arm. Gordon sweeps left. All sorts of room. There's a flag on the play. Gordon's still on his feet inside the 10, but we'll see what the call is. He had a block out there in the flat. Uh, could be a hold yeah, here. We, That's a when it's out in the open like that, and uh, the ball carrier gains the advantage. And it's going to be wiped out with the hold, Dave. Yeah. Well, so, already it's early in the game, but you're seeing the speed of Eli Gordon. I yeah. mean, <laughs> once he gets outside, he's he's big time trouble for the Oilers. Well, two catches already, a long kickoff return, and a nice run there. Even though that's nullified, it'll. Back up the Chemex to their own 30 to bring up first and 15. You, you know, Al Money's come out of the gate here and he's already completed a couple of passes, but on the season, Dave, he's almost completed 80% of his passes. 14 for 18, Chris, 277 yards, six touchdowns, no interceptions. Yeah. That, is, that is Russell Wilson type yeah, is, yeah. numbers. Yeah, tremendous uh, start to the season for Money. Gordon on the right, sweeper on the right, plows ahead, good power. He's going to gain about four. Should bring up second and 11 from the 26. The Midland's testing the edge and see how they quick the, the Oilers can get to the outside. And so far, Midland's got the advantage, I think. Well, Mount Pleasant, um, as we said, are, has got um, some big fellas out there. Josh 
Shell, number 84 on the left end there is about 6'5", 240. Money back to pass. Down the middle, he's got a man open. Touchdown, oh, Kamex. Just dropped it right into Ty Smith. Up. And the Kamex strike pay dirt. A perfectly thrown ball by Al Money and Ty Smith burnt two receiver or two defenders to get to that ball. Excellent play action pass. That's Smith's fourth catch on the year, second touchdown. And yeah, he found a seam on a post pattern and uh, Money just dropped it right in there. Colin Haddad with the extra point is up and good. And the Kemics impressive. That's gonna be uh, Mahabir on the stop. Mahabir, Kemix with a tremendous linebacking crew. Chase Mahabir, number 24, number three, Martin Bradley, and 32, Drew Johnson. Yeah. Uh, tremendous linebacker core. Some are saying it might be one of the best ones they've had in recent memory in terms really? of size, speed, and getting to the ball and making tackles. Six and a half to go in the first quarter. McIntyre field and diving is hemped is no good. Just out of the outstretched <laughs> arms of Davis. Just overthrew him by about a yard and a half. They haven't really gone to Shell or Rickhamstrick so far offensively. High snap and a line drive kick is going to be let go. Probably a wise move there, although it's going to cost him about 10 yards. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough play for Bradley. I have to decide whether to try to pick yeah. up the tricky bounce or not. And Looks like he was in, this close to picking that up. Yeah. He, he, he eyed it and he says, nope, I'm not going to do it. So he moved away. Those are Coach Aldemore when he does these. You know, the thing history going back to the 90s is they know these programs know each other so well and they're so well prepared and they're so smart <laughs> right i mean what wrinkle can you throw at the other team mm -hmm. that they're not prepared for and maybe this is the wrinkle that they're showing that mount pleasant wasn't prepared for so now mcintyre has to adjust right like you said we were talking about in the pregame the what a great rivalry this has become you know it's one of the games you circle oh for sure and say when do we play the Oilers and uh, rightly so you, you mentioned five and five over the last 10 years yeah. it was a thriller last year that Midland won over at Mount Pleasant quick hand off to Johnson he's going to get a couple It'll be third and three yeah, just a different look for Midland right there. Well, it's the old uh, thunder and lightning approach to yeah. running, right? Yeah. I mean, you got Gordon with the speed and getting outside, and then you've got the thunder and Johnson powering up the middle, kind of like zonk and kick back yeah. in, <laughs> way right. back in the day. And, but and they kind of start with a, a double wing, a wing on each side, and then put one of them in motion. Yeah. And all the while they're doing this, and you got to say to yourself, don't forget about money. Right. It's a pitch right well covered by Mount Pleasant. It was Ty Smith, the carry, he's going to lose yardage. And so decision time here for Metner. Got to believe you got to punt the ball, right? Yeah, I think so. You don't so. want to try risk giving Mount Pleasant offensive momentum. I thought that was the best pursuit Mount Pleasant has showed on defense there. They really closed down on the ball quickly on the outside. But once again, Money has a chance to put the Oilers deep in their own side of the field. Caden Slick back deep to receive the punt from Money. 6.52 remaining in the first half. High kick. Fielded at the 14 by Schlicht. And he is met and dropped. <coughs> That's uh, Hunter Kruger on another outstanding special teams play for the Chemex. Has there ever been a year where Middle High's special teams have not been good? I mean, ever? I think in <laughs> the vast majority of games, it's a big advantage for Oh, Midland. for sure. For sure. Whether 
even they turn their kickoff team into a weapon, it seems like. So, Mount Pleasant on their own 19 yard line. All three of their possessions have started inside the 20 tonight. McIntyre's gonna keep it, he's gonna lose yardage. Drew Johnson was in there, didn't get the initial hit. Now, Dave, we were talking before the broadcast about Midland's down linemen, and the name for them is the Grubs. Right. And you said your dad, back in the day, actually came up with the name? He did. He's, he, he invented that one. <laughs> That's what he they, called his D-line, and they're similar, like, to Ty Fagan on that play right there. Not necessarily big guys, but they get low and fumble the snap. They snapped it before McIntyre was ready, and a big loss for... The Oilers. Boy, you did not see that up in Mount Pleasant program. No. That's very sloppy on their part. But those grubs, what they do, they're small guys, strong guys, quick guys, and they get in the feet of the offensive linemen so they can't make right. their blocks. So, so like 23, Danny Turberg is on there. He's not uh, a real big guy, but, you know, those guys just wreak havoc. Kruger is in there. Uh, Number six, Fagan, Hine. Cole Shell. Third and long, low snap, it's a reverse. Halfback pass, oh, he's got room to run, what a play. Still on his feet, this is gonna be a big game. See if Midland can catch him. Down the right sideline and Oilers will score. What a play call, Corey Davis took a uh, halfback pass. And it was really, he had his locker out in front of him and he just raced down the right sideline with just over five minutes to go. What a play call by the Oilers. Well, trickery is what they needed at this point because they were going nowhere with the offense that they had been showing in, in the running game or passing game, but uh, an option pass worked. Extra point for the Oilers is good. And uh, just like that, the Ender Funnel ties the score 7 7. Yeah, the Midland defense had just shut them down. And then uh, Coach McIntyre just went deep in the playbook. Deep there. in the playbook, yeah. And what was that, about 80 yards or so? We, we it was, yeah. It was about from the, around the 14. So about 80, 85, 86 yards. Yeah, well we talked about what do you have in your bag of tricks to surprise the other team and that's what Mount Pleasant had. Maybe they have more along those lines, but uh, that was perfectly executed. Well, Coming just, off a poorly executed play. Right, it looked like, it looked like they were gonna just kind of, uh, like they were going to just kind of conservatively try to run the ball around end on a kind of a reverse run really yeah and then um, Davis just slipped free yep so he found him open he made a nice catch and then it was really as long as the receiver was out there for the block he executed it and he was gone so Midland try to bounce back here kickoff will sail out well, of bounds that's a cardinal sin for a kicker yeah yeah, like you, you mentioned earlier about the kickoff game where they try to do positional kicking. And 90% of the time they're quite effective on that and pinning the, the opponents deep inside the 20, but that time it was not yeah. executed well. I always feel kickoff out of bounds is one of the biggest penalties. <laughs> yeah, we're starting at the 35 now. Yeah, you instantly give decent field position. So the Kamiks will try to rebound here. They tried to do Midland style and it didn't work. Yeah. Really. So now Midland uh, with wide outs instead of that bunch formation. Money back to pass. The receiver's covered. He's on his feet. He's going to try to make something happen. Spins, but he's going to go down after about a two yard game. Number 21 brought him down. That's Griffin Brookins. Good quick feet for Money. Um, I think he wanted to go to Gordon short, but he was well covered. So he pulled the ball down, 
surveyed the field and just had to take off. Second and eight for the Chemex. Douglas in the game. We're going back to that tight formation. Douglas in motion this time. Money back to pass. Fires downfield. He's got Gordon! Down the middle of the field. It's a race to the end zone. Gordon is, puts a move on and he's going to drive ahead to the two yard line. The Kemick strike back quick. So Money puts it in the outstretched arms of Gordon. The, the dangerous Eli Gordon. Well, you're talking about that bunch play and Gordon's back here. You're thinking they're gonna run the ball. Well, that doesn't happen. He slips free and he is wide open down here for the pass. Money again, just puts it between the numbers where only Gordon can catch it. First and goal, Kamex. Money's gonna keep it, drives ahead, touchdown, Chemex. Great response by Midland after giving up the big play and Mount Pleasant tying to just uh, march down the field, led by that big pass play from Money to Gordon for, to regain the lead. For as much confidence as that big play made for Mount Pleasant, I think Mount Midland's drive here just sucked all that confidence <laughs> yeah. away from them because they answered the right cross with a strong punch of their own. Colin Haddad for the extra point. Money the holder. Kick is up. Low line drive, but it splits the uprights. And with 4.08 to go in the half, the Chemex regain that seven-point lead, 14-7. Well, Money, again, is a threat throwing or running, and this time he gets the ball, picks his spot inside the line, and basically goes untouched into the end zone. Puts his head down here about the two-yard line, goes in, and Kimmix are leading. Colin Coffey, the right guard, did a great seal block there to uh, help create that hole. You know what I liked about that drive from Middle High is, I mean, what a shocker, right? Mount Pleasant throws out this trick play and it goes a long ways for a touchdown. Zero panic. Zero, they, come right. Right, they come right out, they get the ball, march right down the field. Here we go, boys. We can answer what you got. This game has uh, lived up to the expectation so far. A lot, a lot of big plays and uh, it, it's fun to watch, it's isn't exciting. it? Very isn't fun, isn't to it watch. fun to watch two elite programs go at it? It's, uh, Haddad will perform the kickoff duties for the Chemex. And that short to the right field. That's 15. It's go. It's the dirt. It's going to be recovered, but uh, it's another uh, um, muff. <laughs> Abinohar had uh, second time tonight. Dave, he's had trouble with the kickoff. He did. Yep. Well, you aren't gonna. No higher, yeah. You aren't gonna outdo Midland on positional kicking. Mount Pleasant tried and they kicked it out of bounds. Midland right. executes it well, Too and here we are. The, yeah. And really, with a chance to create a turnover off of it. McTire back to pass. Little swing pass. And uh, tough to bring down. Yep. Yeah. Push down, a good effort by Davis. They've been going to... They, uh, we don't have 15 on our no, roster here, Dave. But that's... Uh, I think it's Corey Davis, isn't it? No, Davis is 20. Yeah. They've gone to him a lot, though. That'll be uh, second and three. McIntyre's going to keep it, going to get the first down, hit by Barry, but not before he uh, will move the chains. Well, as we, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, McIntyre is the son of head coach Jason McIntyre. He's a junior. 
about 5'10", 180. Real good quickness. Yeah, you can see that he, uh, he dangerous on the ground as well as through the air. 3.33 to go in the half. Back to pass, going down the, oh. oh. Something has to be called Tackled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, I think it was more of a collision than a blatant interference, but he really didn't have much choice there. It was Zion Douglas yeah. covering uh, Mason Rondi. Collision right there. Bam. Bring him down. I guess you could call that pass interference. <laughs> yeah. Tackle Mo before. Mo might have had a beef. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, That'll bring up a first down for Mount Pleasant at their own 48-yard line. 324 remaining. McIntyre is going to keep it. Again, picks his way ahead for about a five-yard gain. Barry on the tackle again. On the tackle. So it'll bring up a second and about six. Uh, McIntyre on that quarterback draw that Money also likes to run. They run it similarly, just try to kind of pick their way and maximize what they can get out of it. Yeah. Trips left for the Oilers. McIntyre back to pass. Quick in the flat, one-handed grab. It's going to move the change. That's Caden Schlick, and Mount Pleasant is on the move. Well, McIntyre is on on his money now with the with his throws. He's throwing on the run mostly, as we're seeing right now. But uh, well, you'll, you'll see a sprint out here. You'll see uh, McIntyre go to his left, and he's looking for that short pass in this area right here. Wide open, number three. First and ten, Oilers. Quarterback draw again. He's got room to run. Right up the middle. Good quickness by McIntyre. Still on his feet. All the way inside the ten-yard line. Great run by McIntyre. That was a huge hole. That was a huge hole, and what speed he has. Huh? That's the first time we've really seen him get free. And it's basically a quarterback draw right up the gut, and he's going to pick his spots and zigzag his way for a big, big gain against middle high. He sees the hole, and he cuts right up the middle. Nice block by number 10, and he cuts back here and is brought down at about the seven-yard line. First and goal, Oilers. It's their best drive of the contest so far. And there's going to be a timeout Midland. It'll be their third timeout of the half. And uh, Coach Raponis uh, just wants to get his defensive crew to regroup here. We're so used to seeing Mount Pleasant do the bunch formations and do the power attack with three backs in the backfield. But now they're starting to spread things out with three wide receivers. That spreads out the middle high defense. And... That gives McIntyre some room to run. Right. That's and we're starting to see him uh, showcase his talents. In the first quarter, we really didn't see his talents no. too much, but he does have definite quickness, and he's very elusive. Once, once he gets past the tackle, he's got speed to burn you. Great job again for those Chemic cheerleaders here with uh, despite the limited crowd. As enthusiastic as, as always. Don't you just miss the band? I Don't do you miss wish the, the band. marching band was here in the, yeah, the student the section? Yeah. <laughs> I know the marching band just uh, helps just but, electrify the stadium. But hey, at least we're playing, right? We're playing. We're playing football. Yeah, I'm thankful for that. All right, here's the old school Mount Pleasant line uh, set up here. Gunner behind McIntyre hasn't really carried the ball much. But he'll carry it this time. Drive ahead to the four. Barry again tripping him up. 
Eli Gordon on tackle. Falls Second and goal five. from the Second four. Wouldn't be terribly surprised to see uh, Gunner again. You can see he gets he gets running downhill. Well, plus it better pick up the pace here. One forty to go in the half. Mount Pleasant threatening to tie things up here. And drive ahead. That's a touchdown. That's going to be yeah. that's Gunner again. Yeah. You said we wouldn't be surprised to see him. He just puts his head down, and the offensive line got the surge. That yeah, was old-fashioned uh, run-off tackle, and Mount Pleasant executed it to perfection. Great, great drive by the Oilers. It really was very impressive. And the, the scoreboard just went out here at the stadium. Uh, it just went blank. We know that there's a little over a minute to go in the quarter. There we go. It came back on. Momentary glitch, 128 remaining. Extra point is... No good. I, that was Eli Gordon. I think he got a. He might have got a hand on the ball. Well, it's tremendous penetration by Gordon. This this touchdown here is nothing but a power play, a power move by uh, Gunner off of left tackle. Takes the handoff, puts his head down, barrels his way into the end zone with the help of his lineman. That's a pretty tough stop right there. Yeah, it is. And then that's a big miss extra point. Uh, Eli mm -hmm. Gordon uh, came flying in from the left edge, and uh, it's kind of, it was hard to tell if if he got a finger on it or he, he may have just disrupted the concentration of the kicker. Well, that's a forte by Midland High. That's more special time. We'll take a look at that. Uh, Extra point. And they are rushing. Here comes Gordon in to block the I kick right got, there. I got, a got a piece of it. Of it. <laughs> well, at least he intimidated the kicker. <laughs> Squib kick. Oh, a great job fielding the ball. And uh, it's Douglas. Spins out to the 42. That's another big, that's a big special teams play for Chemix right there with a minute 23 to go. Plenty of time. Gives him decent field position. <laughs> So Gordon started the game with that long kickoff return, and then he's uh, he <laughs> makes his presence felt all over this field. He does. But once again, we're talking about special teams, right? Kickoffs yep. and blocking extra points. Yep. Money alone in the backfield. Three receivers out to the right, two to the left. But it's a quarterback draw. Money spin move into Euler territory <laughs> to the 49. Rick of Strick thought he was going to make the tackle, <laughs> and Money said, nope, no way. I'm getting away from you. So he did a spin move away from, uh, here he goes. Money takes the ball, and you'll see number one, Rick of Strick here. Up, oh, nope, you can't touch me. Second and two for the Chemex. Again, money along the backfield. This time he drops back. He's got time, but there's a whistle. Flag on the play. False start, Chemex. Ah, that's a big penalty. Sure is. Make a second and seven instead of second and two with 50 seconds remaining. Eric Metner says, who was that on? Who was that on? So those, yeah, you wonder if the receivers are just getting over anxious, because that's Second or third time we've seen that today. Yeah, on that between side of the, the two team, Between the two teams. <laughs> yeah. Five wide receivers. Johnson in the left slot. Money back to pass. Fires. He's got Gordon. He's got the first down. Still on his feet. Still going. Eli Gordon. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a run down to the... 26 yard line. Whew. Well, once again, we'll see Money drop back and he'll find, Money goes back to this position, he'll find Gordon out here, basically a, a button hook type route, guns it to him, and then once Gordon makes the catch, it's all athletic ability wow. and speed at that point, going up the sideline. 
Kemix knocking on the door. Money back to pass under heavy pressure, and he just goes down. And I don't think they have any timeouts left. That's that Humphrey, Max Humphrey, number 15. 10 seconds to go, the clock's running. He's either got to down it, he better hurry up if he's going to spike it. He did get it down with one second to go. That was a big blitz by uh, Mount Pleasant, came from the left side, and Money had no chance. Max Humphrey has played a strong game for the Oilers from his linebacker position. He pretty much came in unblocked from the left side. Yeah, he, he was unimpeded to the quarterback. Yeah. That's a clean shot. That's every linebacker's uh, dream yeah. right there. Clean shot at the quarterback. Heads up uh, field general play by Money to get everybody lined up to get that ball spiked with one second to go. I guess you could say Mount Pleasant's in the preve <laughs> prevent <laughs> defense. There are five people inside the 10 yard line. Hail Mary pass down and it is knocked down. Intended for Drew Barry. And so. Uh oh. And we have a lineman down. Yeah, that's Logan Ware is in, uh, in a lot of pain for the Chemex. Did not see what happened to him, but no. he is he is in a lot of pain, as you say. That does bring us to the end of the first half. Dramatic half of oh. football. This is just great stuff, Chris. Dramatic, well played, fun. <laughs> Typical of Mount Pleasant versus Midland High. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, is it tough on the players when there's not many people in the stands? And you, you know how it is when you play sports. Once you get in the game, you just yeah. are thinking about the game. Obviously, the crowd can be a big factor in a football game, but uh, these guys are just out here competing. Yeah. Well, you have your own teammates cheering. You have the cheerleaders cheering, and you have your parents cheering. That's so right. So put it all together. That's, that's a nice little uh, crowd. Well, Chris, I know we, we didn't get to these before uh, we started, but... Uh, let's see how accurate I was, let's okay? See how we'll I see how accurate. All right. I, I did this before the game. Right. He, so did, it, he did it before. I yeah. vouched for him. Yes. So number one key I had is money, man, is money. And that is Al Money, and he has been money so far. He He's, has. In terms of throwing the ball and running the ball, he has been outstanding. Uh, number two... Make Mount Pleasant throw the ball. That means your defense has to stop the run. They're a power running team. And uh, Mount Pleasant used a trick play to score on a one big play. And then McIntyre, the quarterback, is really impressing us with his speed and his elusiveness. So uh, Midland's going to have to make adjustments to him because he looks like he could be a difference maker. And then three is uh, win the special teams in all four quarters and again Dave and I have been talking about that tonight is on kickoffs or punts or extra points middle and high needs to make a difference impose their will and they did that by blocking an extra point and, it, and that made the score 14-13 entering the half here in their favor so let's go to Mount Pleasant pound the ball they had those two big guys in Rickham Strick and Shell. 6'5", 240 each of them. They have a big line, big backs. You want to pound the ball so middle high doesn't get the ball in offense. Middle high's got playmakers all across the field, Money and Gordon and Smith and Barry. And, you know, they've got a lot of guys who can make plays. So you want to control the ball. Number two is keep Money in the pocket. Don't let him beat you. He has the capability and the ability to beat you throwing the ball, but he can run and he can make big plays with his feet. And number three is uh, play the final tick on the clock. It's a away game. This is going to be a very close game. Expect this game to go down to the final seconds. That should be your mindset when you're the away team trying to beat the home team here in such a marquee matchup game. And, and by the looks of it at halftime here, 14-13, we are going to see this game go down to the final seconds. Dave. I think you're right. It's, uh, it's been dramatic and uh, as they uh, still attend to uh, Logan Ware, the left tackle of the Chemex, unfortunately uh, in a lot of pain trying to get off the field. Um, but we're going to we're going to turn things over 
uh, for the halftime, and uh, we will be back with you to bring you the second half of the game again. 14-13, Midland on top as uh, we as we go into halftime. With the MCTV Network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Uh, I don't recall the exact details of getting involved, but I know that it was, uh, I had an interest in television. I had an interest in producing programs and commu uh, Midland Community Television was a perfect outlet for that and has been for the last 30 years a way for somebody to uh, become involved with the production of television programs and and saying what you want to say showing what you want to show with very few limits on it and then having that actually be uh, produced and sent out to the community at large access facility gives you the opportunity to engage your community with your own television show. The content on our Community Voices channel ranges from talk shows, variety hours, and nonprofit informational specials. With the power of video continuing to gain steam, there's no better facility to produce your own content. Check out the City of Midland website or give us a call for more information. The sooner you do, the sooner you can make your own show. Looking for a new hobby? How would you like to create your own television show? Call Midland Community Television at 837-3474 to sign up for our next orientation studio workshop. You will learn how to use a studio camera, learn how to edit on a computer, or even be the host of your very own TV show. Don't wait, sign up today. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to sign up. Midland Community Television, your community voice. Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. 
Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user. Well, I can only imagine the benefit to the community is through what you hear on the streets as far as did you see or there was information that I didn't know about. It would be Midland County Cancer Services or uh, the police department or city hall meetings, uh, commission meetings. And so it's the news of the community on television. Midland only has one television station. MCTV is the station for Midland. The MCTV Network helps Midland residents share their story with the community. Our media producer workshops will help you get started. In one short session, you will learn how to create media that will educate, entertain, and enrich the community in which we live. Get registered for a workshop by calling 837-3474, follow us on Facebook for more information, and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube and your podcast platform for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. MCTV gives you a chance to to uh, expand your um, your horizons in terms of what you can express, uh, that the rest of the community can benefit from witnessing it, and it gives you a chance to um, enrich others through your enrichment. I think that's really important. Whether you're an artist, whether you're a musician, whether you have a passion for political ideas or spiritual ideas, MCTV gives a, a, a voice to that, an opportunity for your voice to be heard.
With the MCTV Network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Uh, I don't recall the exact details of getting involved, but I know that it was, uh, I had an interest in television. I had an interest in producing programs and commu uh, Midland Community Television was a perfect outlet for that and has been for the last 30 years a way for somebody to uh, become involved with the production of television programs and and saying what you want to say showing what you want to show with very few limits on it and then having that actually be uh, produced and sent out to the community at large local public access facility gives you the opportunity to engage your community with your own television show. The content on our Community Voices channel ranges from talk shows, variety hours, and nonprofit informational specials. With the power of video continuing to gain steam, there's no better facility to produce your own content. Check out the City of Midland website or give us a call for more information. The sooner you do, the sooner you can make your own show. Looking for a new hobby? How would you like to create your own television show? Call Midland Community Television at 837-3474 to sign up for our next orientation studio workshop. You will learn how to use a studio camera, learn how to edit on a computer, or even be the host of your very own TV show. Don't wait, sign up today. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to sign up. Midland Community Television, your community voice. Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Here come the Chemics uh, out from the locker room, ready for the second half. And But before we... Uh, get to the kickoff let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half and uh chris you can kind of talk us well, through some of these here's the first touchdown pass money well no i guess this isn't a touchdown pass it's money to gordon and that combination has worked four times tonight for 110 yards and again gordon on the ground gordon can catch gordon can run we're seeing it tonight <laughs> gordon can block extra point kicks see what happens here this is a long kickoff and Gordon gets the ball I think this started the game here yeah. and again 
His speed is impressive and his power. Look at that. Money fakes the handoff and throws deep to Smith. This started the scoring for middle and high. Perfectly thrown ball. Money, his accuracy is quite impressive. Yeah, money, money in the first half was six for eight for 158 yards, and that one touchdown pass we saw there to Smith. Gordon, as I mentioned, caught four balls for 110 yards. Johnson, six carries, 24 yards. And money has run nine times for 20 yards and a TD. Yeah, it's, uh, there's just some superb athletes out here tonight, Chris, uh, really on both teams. and. You know, some of the stars of Midland have really shown here, like Money Gordon and, and those guys. And you got to give Mount Pleasant some credit. You know, they were Midland kind of had them on their heels, and then that one trick play, about yeah. 86 yards, the halfback option, it I kind of shifted everything. It, you know, yeah. it, it uh, got Mount Pleasant back in the game. But Midland marched right back down and scored. You know, we're, we're undaunted by that. And then Mount Pleasant did the same thing, marched yeah. right back down. So Mount, Mount Pleasant needed that uh, halfback option for a score uh, in a bad, bad way. Because yeah. <laughs> they, they weren't doing well offensively. Middle had them stymied. They could not run the ball. They could not throw the ball. Then they throw in that trick play. And all of a sudden, you could see Mount Pleasant exhale like, oh, OK, yeah, we can score and move the ball against these guys. And so, yeah, the Midland defense doing a pretty good job against the uh, the Oilers. Oilers, the number one offensive team uh, in the Saginaw Valley League Blue Division, 726 yards coming in. Midland, number two, not too far behind with 648. Midland, a little more balanced. Uh, their rushing and passing attack where uh, Mount Pleasant is more of a running offense. And the defense is um, the th – the three teams you'd expect to be at the top, uh, Dow, number one, with allowing uh, 339 yards over two games, Midland 341, so uh, very similar in Mount Pleasant at 401. So um, kind of as you'd expect that right. uh, they'd be uh, among the, the leaders in a lot of those categories. Well, you know, I have to admit, the first quarter I was a little uh, disappointed, you might say, McIntyre, the quarterback for Mount Pleasant. I, I was expecting more out of him this first time seeing him this year. In the second quarter, he really impressed me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is an elusive, quick quarterback, and he can throw on the run. And uh, So we'll see what happens here in the second half. But, yeah, he's a playmaker. I like yeah, him. Yeah, they, they helped him out. They, you know, they were running kind of a tight formation to start the game. There wasn't really a lot of room to, to maneuver. When they started spreading things out, it just kind of opened things. He's got those mm -hmm. quick feet, and he can he can create, and that really seemed to uh, to help. Yeah, McIntyre. Yeah, but what, what can you say about Gordon? I mean, the guy's he's just a fantastic first half. Yeah. Special teams, defense, offense. The guy does it all. Quite a playmaker. And so we are about to get underway, folks. Again, welcome everybody over at Dow Diamond, and on YouTube watching live tonight let's enjoy the second half as midland boots it down again <laughs> where they <laughs> do such a great job of just putting it in a tough position uh schlick this time uh, fields it and did a pretty nice job getting it out to about the 22 yard line it's it's like hitting a nine iron into the green and the ball bites Right near, the, <laughs> near, right near the pen. Right I mean, it's, the, just, it's pretty amazing to watch these positional kickoffs by the Chemics. Well, we'll see what adjustments are made by the Oilers here. They've had the bunch line up and they've had the spread. We'll see what they do now. Again, we still haven't really seen them go to Shell or Rickenstrick uh, as in the passing game so far. Gunner. No, that's not Gunner. Oh, big. That was blown up. Johnson and Barry, Barry. just blow that play up. That was Abinohar. We uh, hadn't really seen much from him in the first half. Uh, by that time, he lost a yard. Bring up uh, second and 11. Well, here's 
Barry and Johnson, left side, pretty much unblocked. They, they those, both those guys are hard hitters. Barry, 6'3", 195. Johnson, six foot, 215. Yeah, Abby and had no chance on that one. McIntyre rolls to his right, fires. He got drilled, but uh, completes the pass out to Schlicht. And he's going to move the chains. That he, under some duress there, he took a big hit, did McIntyre, but threw the ball on the money. Rolls in. to his right, under pressure. Looks like Bradley buries him, but nice throw. Give, give credit to McIntyre. He had a guy barreling in on him, and he made an accurate pass there. Good job by him. This time it's Gunner driving ahead for about four yards. Have we seen a turnover tonight? I don't think we have, have we? There has not been, oh, no. Okay. So far, mistake-free by both teams. As you mentioned, Mark Gunner, the big the running back from Mount Pleasant. He uh, easily leads the uh, Saginaw Valley League Blue Division coming into this game with 293 yards, 8.9 yards per carry. Gunner again. Spins ahead, got tripped up by Maha or Johnson, no, Mahabir. Yeah. That was a nice tackle by Mahabir. Uh, looked like uh, Gunner was going to have some room to run, and he just uh, was able to trip him up and bring up a third and two. Audibling here. He's going to keep it. And he's going to. Oh, he broke <laughs> loose. And there he goes. Wow. It looked like Midland had him stopped around the line of scrimmage, but he squirted free. And then there was just nobody in the backfield. And the quick feet of McIntyre goes the distance. You have to be impressed with this young <laughs> quarterback. He's a junior, coach's son, as we mentioned. Quick feet, and he was he was stopped. He was stopped. And he put his head down, he kept his feet moving, and all of a sudden, shot through a hole and went untouched all the way for a score. Mount Pleasant's gonna go for two here. The, the extra point block before, it's 19-14. It's a counter and it's gonna be successful. I think that was, is that Gunner? Yep, Gunner. No, that was- uh, Number 20, Corey Davis? Davis. And so- Well, here we are again, McIntyre takes the ball, goes to the right side of the line, puts his head down, you think, oh, he's, he's tackled. Wait a second. Nope, that doesn't happen. He finds a hole, keeps his feet moving, puts his head down, pew, gone. <laughs> Untouched to the end zone. It looks like Kemmick just um, thought they had him. Thought they had him. Thought his forward progress had been stopped, but no, McIntyre just kept moving and, and so found that hole. It's what you'd expect from a Midland Mount Pleasant game here, yep. back and forth, the first lead of the game for the Oilers, 9.41 to go in the third quarter. Kemmicks have an injured player on that play. Well, this is this is Davis, another injury. I think that's well, Ty Fagan. T formation, Davis gets the ball, goes to the left side. Nice blocking by the left side of the Euler line. Puts his head down, barrels in past Barry, number 19, for the two-point conversion, giving Mount Pleasant a 21-14 lead. Yeah, just ran a little counter there and uh, had the numbers. That's number five, Ty Fagan, getting helped off the field, Dave. Yeah. So. And he's a key player. Yeah. And so Mount Pleasant will, uh, they strike quickly to start the second half. Before the half, we saw Logan Ware, an offensive lineman for Middle High, a sophomore get helped off the field. We'll see if he'll be back on the field for the second half. So fielded at the 13, trying to find some room around, cuts ahead, that was Ty Smith. Pretty good return out to the 32 yard line, so decent field position. 
and uh, the Kemick offense will take the field for their first deficit of the game. So uh, big plays have uh, contributed mightily to the last three, the last two scores for Mount Pleasant for sure, and then uh, Midland towards the end of the half. Johnson in the backfield. A little confusion on Midland's part on offense. Yeah, this is what happened earlier in his oh. delay a game. But not good. Men are not going to be happy. You know, he didn't want to have to use a timeout, but. Uh, and he is not happy as he walks out on the field to talk to money. You burn a timeout in your first series of the second half, that is not good. Well, I think it, they didn't use the timeout. They got called for a delay oh. game. Well, then why is Metner on the field? I <laughs> just, they got time to administer the penalty, I think, so they're. <laughs> uh, All right, no rough timeout. start for the Chemics here. First and 15, Gordon. Money's going to keep it. Going to drive ahead for about three. Rickham Strict was in on the tackle. You've called Rickham Strick's name a few times, but again, 84 Chanel, who is being recruited by 20 plus Division I schools, has not uh -huh. had his name mentioned much. He has not in, been involved in the action from our point of view here. Second and 12, Gordon in motion again, money back to pass. He's looking deep, and he's got his man. I mean, he might be out of bounds. He was, yeah, he he caught it, but came down with his foot out of bounds. It was Martin Bradley, the intended receiver. I know that. I know this was out of bounds on the catch, but what a toss by Money! Drops back. Bradley goes down the sideline, basically a fly pattern. And pinpoint pass just out of bounds here at about the 40 yard line. Could not get that foot in bounds. But man, money. Impressive. Third and 12. Money back to pass. Quarterback, he's going to keep it. Drives ahead, but no, that was a good uh, job by the Oilers defensively. And I think that was. Well. Couldn't see it was, but Midland's going to have to punt. Rick Strick was in on that tackle, and one thing you're seeing here so far early in the second half is Rick Strick is spying money. He's not going to let money beat him on the ground, and he was hanging out in the middle of the field saying, you're not going to get past me, and he chased him down. So money back to punt for the Chemex. Whoa, took a while to get rid of that one. And it's going to take an Euler bounce down at about the 37. And so now this is a momentum has definitely changed. Dave. Yeah, so this is key time you feel for the Chemic defense. You know, a lot of times you, you look at the beginning of the third quarter of a game. Yeah. You know, Mount Pleasant struck quickly, Midland with a three and out, and Mount Pleasant with the ball again, and uh, Kamek's got a defense. He's rides the occasion here. 8.34 to go in the third quarter. And that's the big fella, Gunner. Plows ahead for about four. Mahabir in on the tackle. You kind of get the sense that Mount Pleasant's wearing middle and high down a little bit on that run game. I mean, that was that was a nice size hole for Gunner to go through on the left side of the line there. And keep in mind, I mean, Middle High has an, a number of players going both ways. Johnson and Gordon and Mahavir and Barry. You know, these guys are playing both offense, defense, and special teams in some cases. Second and six. Gunner again. This time, uh, Kemix hold their ground. Right. A lot of blue jerseys surround Gunner on that one. He will give him a yard. 
Yeah. This is this is a big third down stop for Middle High coming up. You want to get that ball back and not give Mount Pleasant any more sense of feeling good about themselves right. because you get that impression right now they're feeling pretty confident. Yeah. So big yeah. time stop here for Middle High. They need it. Two receivers out to the right. Wouldn't be surprised to see McIntyre keep it here. Back to pass. There is motion again out there. That's happened a lot today. It has. So that, that's a big penalty. That's a bit. We're just going to see the uh, number 15 Humphrey going to motion here. And if we're going to try to figure out where, where exactly the motion came into play. I, and the official so on the far side called it. I did not see it, Dave. I'll I be honest with you. I didn't either. McIntyre fires down the middle, oh. just off the hands of the intended receiver, Mason Rondi. Good coverage there by the Chemex. Well, that penalty was a killer for it the Oilers. It was a killer. Absolute killer. And Middle High needs to capitalize on this. Yeah, that basically out. turned it into a must pass uh, situation where before they had uh, some well, options. Let's see if the Kimmicks try to put pressure on the Oiler punter here. Douglas. Bradley back to return. Or Martin Bradley back to receive. Oh, a high snap over the punter's head. And he's going to be buried. Is that a safety or they're going to? It's better if it's not a oh. safety. <laughs> he probably should have run out of the back of the end zone. But yeah. the uh, another special team's advantage <laughs> for the Chemex sails over the punter's head. And he tried to pick it up to get it off. Well, but well this was Chemex nothing more than a bad snap high, about 10 feet, about four feet above the punter's head. And if he had it to do all over again, I'm sure the coach is going to tell him, throw the ball out of the back of the end zone. Yeah. Don't get the caught the at the two-yard two line, yeah. and that's where they the determined his... Two, two is better than seven. Yeah. yeah. So, see, about you were talking about Midland having to capitalize. Here's their opportunity. Money's going to keep it. Money oh. in for the end zone for the touchdown. touchdown Just Boy. like that, the Chemex punch back. In this heavyweight battle here. Momentum flip flopping back and forth. <laughs> and quicker you can say a bad snap from center. Middle high is about ready to tie this game. Now the first uh, turnover of the game and uh, Midland wastes no time uh, converting and taking advantage of that. Al Money just a uh, quarterback draw, just driving ahead. The offensive line blew open another big hole for him. Head out with the extra point is up and good. And we're tied up again, folks. 644 to go in the third quarter. Back and forth action here at Midland Community Stadium. Well, we'll see the replay here, money scoring. And let's be honest, the Mount Pleasant defense was in a daze because they didn't think this was going to happen. So money just takes the ball, finds that hole, cuts right up the middle, puts his head down for a score from two yards out. Game is tied now at 21. 21, but Mount Pleasant has to be a bit discouraged. I mean, they yeah. definitely had momentum on their side. They make a dumb penalty on the motion. Then they have third and long. Midland stops them. They go into punt formation. Bad snap from center. Punt gets the ball instead of running into the end zone for a safety. <laughs> he gets tackled at the two. Midland takes over, scores a touchdown. It's also a heck of a block by Drew Johnson. So the uh, pancake to his the linebacker. So here we go. Now Midland. John Johnson's going to have a lot more pancake blocks before the season's over. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Haddad with the kickoff. You know where it's headed. It well. was a little bit deeper this time. And uh oh, a little room to run. Bradley. Three on three. Aiden Schlick uh, all the way out to the uh, 37, and that's why they pooch kick it most of the time. Is yeah. Uh, it's a really nice return by Schlick. 
a decent field position for the Oilers, who will, in this in this fight, are going to try to punch forth. back. That's right. We'll see how they answer the call here. But yeah, previously, like you said, that was a big defensive stand for the Chemex. Sure was. And, uh, and uh, momentum quickly shifts again. McIntyre with the quarterback draw. It's kind of been their main play yeah. tonight is McIntyre running. As it should be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's proven he can he can make that play work. Thing is, Chris, coming into today, McIntyre had 13 carries for 18 yards. Wow. Which could be some sacks in there possibly, but I mean, it, it wasn't really a featured part of their uh, offense. But tonight... Uh, tonight he had over 50 on one carry. Yeah. When it's tonight touchdown is, run. Uh, it's been the main part of their offense. Yeah, yeah he's been impressive for sure. Second and five. Gunner. Whoa. That's some power right there. He was hit in the backfield. Nick Kruger. Nick Kruger, nice play. He hung on for dear life, he but did. he brought him down. He did. He still um, brings up a third down, but uh, you can see uh, why Gunner is a successful running back. He's got a lot of power. Kruger is one of those grubs we've been talking about. 140 pounds he's playing on the line. And watch him. He does not let go of Gunner. <laughs> he that's says, a, you are not going no. away from me, man. That's a, that's a Brings bull, bulldog down. mentality right there. <laughs> There's that counter play. First down. It's going to be first down for the Oilers. It is Corey Davis. This time that was the really the play that they scored. Got the two-point conversion yeah. on the kind of full house backfield to run a counter. Dave, I know we got a quarter and a half left to play here, but don't you just wish you could say, hey, we're going to make this two out of three. We want you guys <laughs> to play next week and then the following week. Yeah. I mean, this is just a ton of fun watching two great programs go at it. Absolutely. First and 10 Oilers from the 48, 49. McIntyre again, the quarterback draw. This time he tripped up a little bit. 54. And uh, Bradley uh, in on the tackle. Well, give credit to 54, Colin Coffey on that play. He, he came in there, and on his back, he was trying to trip up McIntyre, and he slowed him down. Good job uh, by Coffey, who is, um, also starts on the offensive line. Sophomore, 5'10", 210 pounds. Up front, 52, John Hine in there along with Kruger. McIntyre again. Oh, he's got room to run on the edge. Spins around. And he's, uh, there's a flag on the play over here. I wonder if that's, that might be a hold. I, I thought there might have been a hold on that play on the corner yeah, there on the edge. Yeah, it's a hole. The Chemex uh, yeah. knew it too. Yeah. That's what st sprung him loose. You'll see McIntyre come along here on the left side. Right about in this area, you're going to see a hole. Let's run the play. As he comes along here, there's the hole right there. It looks like it was on Gordon. Backs up the Oilers 10 yards. Bring up second and 15. Short 15, long 14. In the I formation now. They can't off, and he's gonna be sacked. Johnson just shot the gap, blew it up, and uh, the way uh, Kruger came over to High five, Coach Raponis. Uh, they drew something up there. He Johnson, middle linebacker, number 32 right here. He's creeping toward the line of scrimmage. He shoots the gap, and he finds McIntyre and brings him down for a sack. Nice play No chance for McIntyre. Mr. Johnson. And Mount Pleasant, I believe, is going to call it timeout here. Third and 21, 312 to go in the third quarter. Folks, this coverage of 
this Midland High football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to create games like this one, sign up for our media creator workshops. You will learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your video on professional software. Learn how your creation can be made into a podcast or video on YouTube. Call 837-3474 to learn more. More information about MCTV can be found at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash MCTV. MCTV bringing some great coverage again this fall. Football, volleyball, golf, swimming, soccer. MCTV has it all. Third and 21. Little screen, bubble screen, and uh, Midland makes the tackle. It was a really well-designed play, Barry, on the tackle. If he doesn't make that tackle, he might still be running. Yeah, that was a nice play. Two yep. receivers, though, were in the area of the ball, but that was brought in by Humphrey, I believe. Well, it was it? that bubble screen. The yeah. other receiver was out there to block. Um, well, So a big pickup, but uh, Midland, or Mount Pleasant will punt, and Midland will Get the ball back, hopefully in good field position here. It's different. Oh, poor Short kick. Short kick. Middle needs to get out of the way. Oh, a oh. huge pot. What a break <laughs> for the Oilers. Holy cow. Yeah. It was a really short kick. It had a potential to be about a 10 yard punt, but a, a big bounce. Mount Pleasant bounce on this beautiful new. Uh, field. And you were telling me uh, the old field had a crown to it, but on this new field, there's no crown, right? right? So on the, the turf fields now at Northwood, we have the same thing where it can just be flat and it drains. It doesn't need to run off. The drainage goes through the turf. Okay. And so it's got the, the rubber and sand mixed in to the uh, blades of artificial grass. And a beautiful design of this field. I really like the two-tone stripes, the dark and the light. Got both the Dow and Chemic logos out there. Johnson on the carry is going to gain a, about a yard and a half. And brought down by Shell. First time. Yeah. Making a tackle. Number 84. Also a new track here, out here at the... Midland Community Stadium and putting a new tennis courts over yeah. over where the uh, Parkdale Elementary used and to be. And a new parking lot over by the baseball diamond. Yes, so m making a, been a busy summer for Eric Albright and the crew and really sp spectacular facilities. Money back to pass, he's looking downfield and he's brought down, that's Rickham Strict. It's gonna be officially a sack, I think, probably a a small loss there, but Money was looking downfield. Good coverage yeah. uh, by the Oilers. He had nowhere to go. He tried to take off, but Rickham Strick uh, tripped him up, and he'll bring up third and long. Here's the replay. Keep your eyes on number one here. Unblocked, chases down Money, brings him down in. Money back to pass, fires. Oh, he threw behind the receiver. He had, uh, Smith had settled into a, an opening there right around the sticks, but Money uh, off a rare time that he was really off the Yeah, but again, he, he had pressure from Rickham Strick. And, you know, Frank Altimore said this many years ago to me, in big games, you want your best players to be stars. Yeah. And it's time for Rickham Strick, from the Mount Pleasant point of view, and Shell to be stars. Right. Step up, second half, close game against a, a big-time opponent. Zach Wilder comes in on the offensive line for the punt. Money back to punt. High kick, fair catch called right at midfield. And Mount Pleasant will, uh, in the battlefield position, uh, has the edge now. Their defense uh, came up big. Midland unable to do anything on offense that last time. And so with just over a minute to go in the third quarter, 104 to be exact, 
We are tied up at 21. We just, you just sense coming in, this was, could be another epic battle Nail between biter. these two teams, yeah. and here we have it. Last year, Midland won 22-21 in a thriller over in Mount Pleasant. Again, the quarterback draw, and uh, this time a nice job by the Kemic defense. It's uh, Bradley on the stop. Like the tire, it's just those quick feet. He's got real quick feet, and the thing is, you know, when you have a quarterback, he might be hurt, Dave. He he's, looks like he's clutching onto his right hand. He might have oh, taken. Oh, he's a, coming out of the game. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's a big loss. Wyatt Irvin, a junior, I saw, will take over. I saw him in pregame, and he has a nice touch on the ball. He's more of a thrower. Pitch right, and it's going to be about a three-yard gain by Abinohar. Yeah, I don't know what happened. He, he came off the field immediately after yeah. that. He, he looked like he was clutching his right hand, right wrist area. He's a right-handed throwing quarterback. Third and two and a half, and that's the end of the third quarter. Hmm. Whew, so, wow. It's a one-point lead for the Kemics going in, and some explosive plays in that third quarter to knot things up at 21. Well, if McIntyre is out of this game for the rest of the rest of the game, that'll change things. Yeah, that, a guy like him, he just kind of feel he's the kind of guy that says, "Just spit on this and uh, <laughs> <laughs> rub good. it down I'm a little good. bit." Yeah. It's probably good timing with the quarter ending for uh, them to work on his hand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that would change things because that's. He's really been the – McIntyre's been the go-to guy, as we said, for but, Mount Pleasant. Yeah, and defensively, when you're playing a team that has a running quarterback, that puts a whole different pressure on your yeah. defense. It really does. You've got to account for him on every play. And I, I saw Irvin earlier in pregame throwing, and he's got a nice army. I mean, he really can loft the ball deep, and he's accurate, but he doesn't have the quicks that McIntyre has. So he's been thrust into a he's a big, big kid, spot though. here. Yep. Big, strong kid. Don't be surprised if we don't see Gunner get this one here. And it is Gunner, and he's hit. He's driving ahead. What a stop by the Chemex. You got to go for it here. You think? Don't you have he to go for it? Hit fourth once, and two? hit twice, and Gordon finished him off. I. They are going to go for it. I didn't know if with the new quarterback if that would deter him or not, but it's going to be a fourth and two. What a huge play here early in the fourth quarter. There's that full house backfield. They've run the counter out of this a lot. A long count maybe, dry draw them off. Five seconds to go on the play clock. Nope. nope. They hand it off, and no, sir. Kemic defense rises to the occasion. They ran the counter to the right this time. They've been running it to the left. Boy, they let that play clock run down. And yeah. Great that, job by the Kemic defense. Left side of the middle and high defense. They try to penetrate over on this side. But you'll see number 24, Chase Mahavier, come in. And now keep in mind the play clock down to two. Seconds, one second. Handoff. Mahavir does a great job jamming that play at the point of attack. Johnson in there, a host of chemics. And Midland takes over on downs. Boy, that was a killer series for the Oilers. Great job, Midland High defense. Pitch right. Picks his way ahead is Ty Smith. Calling his name quite a bit tonight. I'm trying to see McIntyre on the sidelines, and I cannot see him across the field from us. I don't think they took him into the locker room. I think he's still on the bench over there. 
Smith picked up five on that player, going with that bunch again to pitch right again. Tries to get the edge, first down, Kemig. So Ty Smith uh, again, he's a 5'10", 155 junior. Um, being featured here on this drive in the yeah. running game. Yeah, you didn't expect him to be carrying the ball this no. much, this deep in the game, but again, another another weapon. Another weapon, he's got speed, makes plays. Kemmick's on the Oiler, 46. This time it's Gordon, pitch left to Gordon. Cuts up, drives ahead, picks up 10 yards. Oh my goodness, what a run. Carried uh, Showed number speed and power on that play. Carried number 21, Griffin Brookins, about three yards on his back. And here we are, Gordon getting the ball, coming around on the pitch. He'll get the pitch right about here. And he'll take the ball up here and get saddled by number 21 Griffins and he drags him. let's say one two three five, four five, six five yards. yards almost six yards he carries him wow. didn't quite get the lead block on there but he just uh, sheer determination yeah okay you'd be a first down or third in inches here so I'm looking at the sideline of Mount Pleasant and McIntyre is throwing to a teammate on the sideline. So it looks like he is healthy enough to come back in, Dave. And Midland just short. We're talking about an inch. Third and an inch. Well, you got a lot of options here. I'm a big believer in the quarterback sneak. <laughs> you can see he was about the width of the line. See, I'm Maybe. a big believer in faking it and going for the bomb. <laughs> See? Third and inches. <laughs> and then quarterback sneak. Yeah, you got you Johnson. You can get, get that. Throw it deep. Come on. Quarterback sneak in this is just such a, almost impossible to stop. Oh. Yeah, actually, it's second down. Sec right? Wasn't it? Well, we've got a no, second down and a third down showing. Second down. Because no, Go Gordon, second. Yeah. they had just gotten the first, yeah. So. All right. And Johnson. He gets it. He gets it. Got the penetration of the line. Got the two yards. Move the chains. Why mess around? I bet you it hurts to tackle him. You it would, I would got to believe. I got to believe. You kind of have to think about it the second time he comes through <laughs> the line. Like, do I really want to tackle him? Kemix on the march here at the Oiler 34. Old school football right here. Johnson gets the ball, goes straight up the line and says, here I come, tackle me. Bam. Took two guys Simon to bring him down. Smith to pitch right. And uh, gets a couple. Kind of putting the, the creating numbers with that. They'll pitch uh, to the man that goes in motion, making the other wing back the blocker. You know who hasn't carried the ball much in the second half is Money. No, he hasn't. Wouldn't it be something if he maybe uh, bootlegged one here? And, uh, fake the pitch. Fake a pitch and off he goes. Gordon, back to pass, got, got a man open, got it! All the way down to the three yard line. Ty Smith on the reception. And Ty Smith is a factor here in the second half. Another beautifully thrown ball by yeah, Money. Right on the, yeah, it was just fabulous. They set, that's where you use the run to set up the pass. Yeah, and sure. here's Smith right here. You think up oh, running formation? Nope. He sprints down the center of the field and yeah. catches that ball right there. It's a little post pattern. A little post pattern and touchdown saving tackle by the Oilers. First and goal. Money's going to keep it this time. Drives ahead to the one. 
Oh, he's in, Touchdown. he's in. A late signal by the official. Al Money hits strikes pay dirt again for the Chemex. And Midland retakes the lead. It's important here to make your extra points. Close game like this. Yeah. Haddad, good snap, good hold, good kick. And the Got comics it. back on top by seven. Back and forth we go. And here we go. Money, we've seen this formation before. He gets the he gets the snap from center. He kind of eyeballs the middle of the line. He picks the hole he wants, puts his head down, goes in for a T D. <laughs> <laughs> the old line uh, is able to shove the Mount Pleasant line back the the yardage and uh, money scores. Yeah. yeah, money gets credit for that touchdown, but uh, you know that's one of those kind of an old line touchdown. You know they old line old line takes a lot of pride in they, touchdowns like that. They, uh, yeah, they got the thrown back the, the line of Winter Wilder Coffee Church is uh, getting it done. Well, here we are. We're approaching crunch time now. A little yeah. over, a little less than nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Well, will we see McIntyre back on the field for? Yes, we will. There's Boilers. no way he's staying out of this game. <laughs> All right. I never. Yeah. Doubted, I would, His would helmet never is on. That. Yeah. He's pacing back and forth. Yeah, I think he's coming. In. Now back to pooching it right around that 10, and he drops oh. it. And the ball is free, and it is. It's loose. And the Chemics have it. It's <laughs> Ty Smith having a phenomenal second half. It's good. Keep talking. You pooch it to that 10, <laughs> the 10 mark the number there and it just seems difficult to handle it's the third time it's touched the ground special team special team special teams yeah. again here we go credit to them Colin Haddad has got that down on how to do that and then the coverage is all over it Smith pounces well and he made about three the... mistakes on this play tried to pick it up he couldn't and pounced on. Play action pass, money into the end zone for Barry, touchdown, Chemex! It converted the turnover in one play again. Al Money to Drew Barry for the second time tonight. And this game has turned on a dime. Oh, it sure has. Midland strikes quick really, two off touch, the turnover. Two touchdowns in a matter of seconds. Dodd, the kick is good. Well, and just like that, Midland with the two touchdown lead. Mount Pleasant, first of all, their defense is probably in a fog after that turnover because they can't believe that happened. So Midland High, Midland High strikes quick with money connecting with Barry. And Barry catches the ball in the end zone. You see money. You think it's going to be a run? No, not a run. Barry. Cuts across the line over here. Catches the ball in the end zone untouched for a score. Midland's up, two touchdowns. And momentum squarely on their side. So Mount Pleasant has had two turnovers and the Comics scored on the next play both times. And now uh, Mount Pleasant's reeling right now. Oh. Well, this, this is a... Well, <laughs> their special teams have failed them tonight. Failed him, killed him. Yeah, you're I mean, right. That right there, then the punt, the the snap over the punter's head. Blocked extra point. Blocked extra point. Long it's just. Kickoff return. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, we say uh, the vast majority of the games that Midland High plays in, they have the edge on special teams, and that has certainly played out tonight. Keep in mind, both these teams are 2-0, and oh, and they're in the same division in the Valley. Kickoff oh, in the again. same spot and the same problem. He picks it up 
and he's buried inside the 10. Oh my goodness. There is just, it's like the Bermuda Triangle when you <laughs> kick it to that 10 yard line. It's, I don't know if it's the angle or what, but that is the fourth time that has touched the turf. And Mid Mount Pleasant on their heels, pinned back at the nine. 91 yards to go. And your two touchdowns down with 8.24 to play. Here it is again. As Dave said, the Bermuda Triangle starts right <laughs> there. And he picks up the ball and is brought down at the nine yard line. It's, well, it's a killer for the Oilers. And man. a penalty. Looks like motion again. Motion again. Well, they're trying a lot of trickeration on that play. Offsides. So a player was just playing lined up offsides. Well, how about Ty Smith? He's uh, he's been a name for himself he tonight, has. hasn't he? Hats off to him. He's uh, been a key factor in the running game, in the passing game, I, I, and I now would, in special teams. I would say that the Oilers are just rattled right they now. They gotta be. They just gotta be rattled. I mean, they third quarter, they were in charge. All of a sudden, now they're down two scores in the fourth quarter. Three straight chemic touchdowns. There's the pitch. It's to Abinahar. He's gonna get about three of those five yards back, maybe four. You know, you can look back on a lot of plays to turn the momentum, but I think one big play was McIntyre getting his hand hurt coming out of that series. Yeah, it kind of stopped their yeah, offense. Yeah, I mean, it came to a screeching halt. Now they're switching out into the Wildcat. And Corey Davis back to pass. Oh, there's no. got to be a flag there, yep. Gordon got tangled up with Shell. Shell hasn't touched the ball all night. He's the big tight end, the Division I prospect. They tried going to him on that play, but he got tackled. You know, um, that was interesting. They uh, and he, had he, Davis throw the ball. They, of, yeah. They you know, they, because maybe his hand is banged up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't, in this situation, you would. But, you know, they used that trickeration with halfback pass before, and it worked. Yeah, Gordon was called for the interference there. He yeah, he just got got tangled up. Tangled up with the shell. Tire back in the shotgun. Here comes a screen pass, and Davis gonna ramble on up to the 39. Good answer here by Mount Pleasant. It's not two minutes to go yet, but I think you're in the two-minute drill at this point. Yeah, it could be. You need to speed up your offense. You you've only got seven and a half minutes to go. You're down two scores. But like I said earlier, keys of the game, play to the final tick on the right. clock. And I've seen too many of these games go down to the final 10 seconds. Tire fires. Oh, that was a dangerous pass. That was. There was, he kind of threw it in between the two receivers. Yeah, that easily could have been picked off. Not sure. If that was to Rondi or well, he just he just dropped back here and just gunned it over to this side of the field, and fortunately for him, there was uh, no middle high player. Looks like it was intended for you know, number eight. Did it get tipped? Mason Rodney, but I don't think it got tipped. I just think it was a bad pass. Oh boy! Back. Oh, that might be a lateral. That might be a lateral. They didn't call incomplete. Now they call it incomplete. Incomplete, okay. Yeah, I thought it was, actually. The, uh, but they tried some more trickeration here, and it, uh, it did not work. Well, this was a handoff. Looks like to, is it to Davis. Yep, yeah. Davis. And Davis throws it to McIntyre, and he throws it forward. If that had been thrown backwards, that would have been a live ball. There wasn't much chance of that play working. They threw it no. back to him, and there was three blue jerseys <laughs> ready to uh, light up McIntyre. All right, third down here. Do you go for it on a fourth if you third don't get it? Ten. 
seven to seven minutes to go in the game. Low oh, snap. Boy. McIntyre brought down. Mahavir, Johnny on the spot. Now they're going to have to kick. Wow. Well, Mahavir, great play. He was coming in on a blitz and brought down McIntyre. But I'll tell you, I've been watching Mount Pleasant a lot of years. Look at Mahavir come in from the left side here. Bad snap. Beat. Beat Great the, job beating the block. Beat the block and brought down for a big loss. But this has got to be the sloppiest I've seen Mount Pleasant play in any amount of time you want to name. Fair catch <laughs> signal. Yeah. It's, uh, this is not Smith. them. Uncharacteristics of the Oilers to play this sloppy. Ty Smith with the fair catch and Midland. Now it's uh, with six and a half to go, ball on their own 40. You gotta try to chew up some clock. They move the chains a few times here and it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty tough for Mount Pleasant. We'll see if they continue with a double wing formation. to Gordon, this time nowhere to run. There, there's a shell that time yeah. and uh, just uh, threw Gordon to the ground. Maybe got a half yard. Well, Middle High has used this formation to slip a back out of the backfield for a pass play. So let's see if they'll try that again. It's not like, you know, you'd, you'd see that and you figure, well, it's just a run yeah. situation, but they've uh, still been able to find balance out of it. Yeah, Smith or Gordon could slip out of there and for a pass play. This time Johnson is gonna plow ahead for a couple. Five, well, five and a half to go now. Third and long. Third and about seven. Well, we're halfway through the six game regular season. If Midland hangs on to win this, they'll be three and oh. Yeah. And Mount Pleasant will be two and one. Last year when they met, they were five and oh. Each team Both was five teams. and oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a classic last year. Now, the play clock is new to me here. Yeah. New this year. Yep. Money's watching it tick down below five. Counter to Smith. He's got room to run. Up. There he goes. Ty Smith on the loose again. Still on his feet inside the five yard line. Oh, my goodness. This young man is having a uh -oh. huge flag thrown on the play. The referee is talking to Gordon at the 45 yard line. Something uh, transpired. Yeah, he is going to be a unsportsman like. He must have yelled at the ref or something. Because there was no Oilers back there, so the only exchange was, was with the official. Coach Rapinas is talking to him. Ooh, that's a big penalty because they were uh, inside the five yard line. I think he was complaining about a late hit on money. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, I think he was, too. Yeah. I think he was trying to back his teammate there, but. but. Ty Smith having a monster uh, half. Yeah, we talked about money and Gordon coming into this game as the top offensive threats, but man, Smith. Well, I was looking <laughs> what for, a game. you know, we get the Saginaw Valley League stats. And uh, Smith has not run the ball this year until this game. Great speed. So here we are, ball at the 19 yard line, 4.55 left. In a strange way, it gives them more room to run some more clock out. Yeah. Although if you, you, know, you score again down there in the four, that pretty much it's, puts yeah. out of reach. Well, that last play, I mean, that was the third and long, Dave. Yeah. Here it is. I mean, third and long, what do you think they're going to do? Well, maybe pass. No, nope. we're going to get the ball to this guy right there, number two, counter play. Well, they, yeah, that was a little, little new wrinkle to that offense because they've 
almost always given it to the man in motion. This time they countered yep. to Smith, ran the other way. This formation has definitely frustrated the Oilers, that's for sure. Johnson this time. See, Gordon is upset again about the same thing, that a late hit on, uh, they took a shot at on money. And then Gordon was complaining, and Metner's yelling at him to don't be getting another one of these. So Johnson uh, powers his way for a yard. Yeah, there's a lot of frustration on Midland High's part about money taking hits that yeah. they feel are not deserved. And they want the referee to step up and make the call and put it into it. Second and nine. But you have to ask, why is he taking a hit on a handoff, right? When he's away exactly. from the play. Pitch to Smith. Still on his feet. Oh, there he goes! <laughs> Ty Smith down to one, <laughs> what a job, oh my goodness. He was dead to rights, but he was not going down. He spins his way out of it, breaks a tackle, muscles his way inside the one. Well, if I was giving away game balls tonight, he would be getting one. <laughs> Here he is again, number two. You think he's gonna follow? Is blocking, you think he stopped? Nope, he squirts out of there and goes down to about the half yard line. Good play, good blocking. Johnson this time, touchdown Chemex. And that was just a power drive. That was a statement drive that you're not stopping us. And now Midland in total control. Okay. That was the KO punch right there. Johnson yep. up the middle. Yep. And don't look now, but Midland scored 40 plus points again. Third yep. straight game. 41 21. And man, this game turned around. Midland was down 21 14. And uh, the extra point again is good. Well, three and a half to go. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Flags on the field. There's a little pushing and shoving, it looks like. Yeah, that might be some frustration on Mount Pleasant's part. Yeah. See, Mahavir's been uh, in that formation playing in that tight You give the ball spot. to this guy, no one's going to stop him at that point. He's going to get at least a yard because he's so big and strong. And here he goes. Johnson puts his head down, crosses the goal line for a touchdown. Middle high leading 42 to 21. Play is a personal foul on the Chemex, so they'll be, uh, they won't be able to kick it to the Bermuda Triangle this time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Mount Pleasant's expecting it there. He's standing right on the 10. <laughs> they should have three totally guys at the 10. But this time, Middle's going to have to kick from uh, the uh, 25 instead. Well, now we'll see if they pitch it, uh, pooch it down there to the 25 instead of the 10. Well, I, I'm going to guess we're not going to see money again for the rest of the game. Keep him out. Be with her taking some shots yeah, at him. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to risk. A late hit, cheap shot, whatever on him. There's that same kickoff, the same base carry, and they <laughs> dropped it again. What is the? Uh oh, but he's got room to run this flag. time. There's a flag. There's an illegal block. It's getting a little chippy out here. And you know who, who drew that penalty? No. Ty Smith. Ty Smith. <laughs> Game ball. <laughs> Ty, you get a game ball tonight, man. You've had a whale of a game. There's another Kemic die. It looks like a cramp way there. Hunter Kruger is attending to his teammate. I can't see who that is with the cramp. I think it might be Douglas. Well, we've seen this uh, play 
too many times from, from Mount Pleasant's perspective here. It's just you uh, bobble the kickoff. Wow. When it's to that spot, it has been bobbled every time. I'm going to say four times tonight on kickoffs. Four times it's been bobbled or fumbled. Yeah, this is where, you know, Midland stopped Mount Pleasant on downs. Yeah. And that came right down and then a turnover. Yeah. I, I, I personally think that was the pivotal, stopping yeah. on fourth down, yeah. and all of a sudden. And then the, it just, yeah. it started. Uh, the haymaker started to <laughs> land at that right. point. Yeah. There's a lot, the locomotive was <laughs> going down the track. You can use a lot of. Uh, Mount Pleasant's got to be saying, what you know, happened? Just, what happened to yeah, us? Yeah, it just got out of, it was having a classic game and just got yeah. out of control. Out of character for them making so many mistakes, but man, give credit to the middle high. The middle high has been mistake free for the most part. I'm all night. Yeah, it, it's a, just been a phenomenal performance. It's going to go. Oh, Coach Panner, no, being a higher. <laughs> oh, there's a flag. Yeah. He got crushed by Martin Bradley. Wow, I hope we have a replay of that. It's going to be a... Oh, they call the flag on it's that? Pass, no, it's pass interference. Watch on, uh, Bradley Mahabler. just absolutely annihilate number two, McIntyre. Comes in unblocked. He takes him and punishes him. Watch this. Wham! Oh, wow. oh yeah. that is Ouch. just a blast of a tackle. Wow. The Mahavir tried to uh, jump that route, but he, he got a piece of the receiver. and um, So it'll be a first down for the Oilers out to the 44. <laughs> that yeah, might be one of the hardest shot. hits on a quarterback I've seen in a while. <laughs> a tough kid. He bounced right back up. Being a har, nothing doing there. No gain on the play. Oh, that's uh, Bradley is shaken up. He's in, he's in La La Land. Oh, uh, it does not yeah. look good. He, I don't know if he took a blow to the head because he's. He looked a little unsteady. Let's see, uh, when he hit, hit McIntyre, if he uh, took some of that. Second and 10. Sam Dower checks into the game for the Chemics, number 21. A little screen pass, and great job by... Uh, Dower comes into the game and makes tackle right off the yeah. bat. Hey, that's one of those next man up things. So uh, they'll they'll give them that play for the rest of the game. They will, yes. You know, three yard pass. Who cares? Dower, uh, junior. Oh yeah, absolutely. Two and a half to go. Clock's yeah. ticking. Kind of need a little more urgency if you're gonna have any shot at all. I would think McIntyre, running. Oh, he got crushed again. I didn't think he caught it. No, they called it incomplete. McIntyre oh. took a blow by Mahabir. There's a lot of uh, hard hits happening right <laughs> now on both sides. Yeah. McIntyre's a tough customer. It's fourth and seven. Mount Pleasant's going to call a timeout. Well, he's going to know he was in a football game tomorrow morning when he wakes up. Yeah. Again, you talked about it. Mahavir comes in and absolutely lights up McIntyre. Watch this. Bam, right in the chest. Takes him down. That Kruger, pass was Kruger incomplete. in on that, too. And then uh, number seven took a shot by, yeah. and by uh, Barry and Kruger. I know we have about 
two minutes left to play, but you kind of have the feeling that this game could get kind of chippy in the last two minutes, or more it chippy maybe bit. in the last two minutes. Yeah. These are this is an intense rivalry. It is. In Mount Pleasant's just kicking themselves for playing the way they played in the last quarter and a half. So here we go. Fourth and long. There's Corrigan in the lineup for Midland, 56. Back to pass. Down, incomplete. He overthrew. Under pressure again, he tried to get Shell, and uh, Midland will take over. And this is yeah. this is just going to be a tremendous comic victory here. Sure is. After bringing in the uh, well, second unit, I think we can say that, say that Shell was pretty much a non-factor in this game tonight. Yeah. Offensively, he did nothing for him, and defensively, I think we called his name once or twice. Great game by Midland High to score 40 plus points in three straight games. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it certainly is. And it gets is. a team like this, you're scoring 42. Well, we knew about some of the weapons with Gordon and Money. Um, yeah, Money is not in the game, Dave, like I no, said. No, yeah, but, uh, but then now you got Ty Smith really being a factor here. Vocal will take this the handoff from Dower in maybe a yard. There's number 13, Tim Vocal. Well, I, I like the play clock on the, yeah. at the end zones there. That's nice. That's a nice addition. Clock's so. winding down the Kemick faithful that are here. And like you said, all the folks out there at Dow Diamond Cheering on your comics, uh, tremendous performance. Watching, to be proud uh, of. Watching a great victory here by the Kimics. Oh, it's the dirt that time. That's all right. It eats up more time for them. Went it down for the final minute. Well, it'll be interesting to see when the state rankings come out. Uh, Midland High typically plays Division II. And I would say, Dave, they'll probably be a top five ranked team. They might be. I mean, with three dominant victories. Yeah. And then... Uh, and re remember, this, is, this core of players played last year and really gave Muskegon Mona Shores their best game in the state playoffs. And Muskegon Mona Shores right. went on to win the state championship. Right. And Mona Shores beat him here in Midland Stadium. Um, but here we go. Dower takes the snap. And now you're just in e eating clock mode here. Takes a hard hit at the 50 and brought down. Yeah, they're not going to have to snap it again. No. Nope. Tremendous Kempick victory tonight, and uh, there will be uh, the reigning schedule will be Bay City Central, Carmen Ainsworth, and then Dow High. Um, but uh, yeah, folks, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank, thanks again out to uh, for to Dow Diamond, Chris Mudhank, and the crew for making it possible to for fans to enjoy the game out at Dow Diamond, and all the parents that are. Uh, that are here, the cheerleaders, and uh, we're going to take a look at some of the game highlights. And there's uh, there's plenty of them for the Chemics, Chris. Yeah, there are. And what we're going to see here is looks like money and number two, Mr. Uh, Ty to Barry. This is a uh, oh, no Ty thing. Smith. Yeah, or Ty Smith. Yeah, yeah. Ty Smith. Yeah. I forgot about he had that first touchdown. Yeah, I'm. I have to say he's player of the game tonight, but he's got a lot of competition for that from Money and Gordon. And here's McIntyre. You thought he was stopped, but nope, he squirts out of there and off he goes for a Mount Pleasant touchdown. And he was impressive tonight. First time we've seen him play. He's got quick quickness and he can throw the ball well. And this was a killer play for Mount Pleasant. A bad snap, middle and high stopped the uh, the forward progress at the two. They took over at the two-yard line, and Money, we have that highlight here. Money took the ball in for a score. 
But that was a, I mean, Mount Pleasant was leading at that point. Here comes Money. We saw that play a lot tonight, right up the gut. Yeah, just that Four offensive touch. line, just having yeah. their way with that defensive line. And here we are, McIntyre and Johnson imposing his will on McIntyre. Johnson plays both fullback and linebacker. And here's Money dropping back, fires the ball. Nice snag there. Is that Smith again? Naturally. Yep, Smith. We should know that by now. Number two. And money up the middle for another score. Another outstanding game. You keep this up, Mr. Money, you'll be an all-state football player this year. <laughs> and here we are. Money drops back, and here's Barry. Touchdown. Second half action there. That was Barry hauling that ball. And here's money again. Giving off the ball to Smith. And off he goes. Number two, we salute you for <laughs> such a awesome game tonight. Keep in mind, Middle High was down 21 to 14 in the second half. Right. In the second half, they were down by a score. So money pitches to Smith up the middle. You think he stopped? Nope, he spins. He keeps moving. And he's brought down inside the one, and Middle Ohio will punch it in from there for another touchdown. But yeah, Dave, you think about that. They're down 21 to 14 in the third quarter, and they went 42 to 21. Yeah. There's Johnson, Larry Zonka of the 21st century, <laughs> bashing into the end zone. And voila, 42 to 21. He thought, you look at the score, people are going to think, oh, Middle Ohio blew him out. Oh, Middle Ohio. Nah, it wasn't that yeah, way. Just, uh, it just got. Got it rolling in the second half, converted on turnovers, dominated the special teams, and uh, just had their big players step up in a big game. Yeah. And a great team victory for Midland. And we have to say it was a homecoming victory, right? A homecoming right? victory, homecoming yes. Victory. Without the festivities. Right. But uh, the players will enjoy this. Uh, There's Eric Metner. Won't be any nice less. In, yep, any, won't be any less enjoyment uh, on this win here tonight for the. Well, for the men in blue. 20 and plus years from now, when their dads, they'll be able to tell their kids, you won't believe the homecoming game that we <laughs> played right. against Mount Pleasant. That's right, that's right. We had, uh, what, 150 people in the stands. So the Chemex uh, improved to 3-0 with three games left in this abbreviated six-game season. Like we mentioned, Bay City Central up next, then Carmen Ainsworth followed by the Dow High game at, on October 23rd. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, again, thanks to all the MCTV crew. Another great job by the, the guys in the truck and the camera camera work. Um, Midland, our community is just blessed to have uh, MCTV and such a great uh, group of volunteers. Absolutely. And so, again, this was Dave Marsh bringing you the homecoming action tonight along with Chris Stevens. Thanks for joining us, folks. Again, final score, a Midland High 42, Mount Pleasant 21. Good night, everybody.
Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user. Well, I can only imagine the benefit to the community is through what you hear on the streets as far as did you see or there was information that I didn't know about. It would be Midland County Cancer Services or uh, the police department or city hall meetings, uh, commission meetings. And so it's the news of the community on television. Midland only has one television station. MCTV is the station for Midland. The MCTV Network helps Midland residents share their story with the community. Our media producer workshops will help you get started. In one short session, you will learn how to create media that will educate, entertain, and enrich the community in which we live. Get registered for a workshop by calling 837-3474, follow us on Facebook for more information, and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube and your podcast platform for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. MCTV gives you a chance to to uh, expand your um, your horizons in terms of what you can express, that the rest of the community can benefit from witnessing it, and it gives you a chance to um, enrich others through your enrichment. I think that's really important. Whether you're an artist, whether you're a musician, whether you have a passion for political ideas or spiritual ideas, MCTV gives a, a, a voice to that, an opportunity for your voice to be heard.